Yep, this is definitely a Marvel sequel. I am the Kaijin Okami, and this is my quickie review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So Guardians of the Galaxy 2 kicks off shortly after the events of the first movie with the Guardians being hired to do a job. They do the job, but then Rocket does something that screws it all up. So they end up coming into contact with Star-Lord's father Ego, and the antics go on from there. Well, overall, the movie was entertaining, it was funny, but it was a Marvel sequel. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, I mean, it's a movie that was still good, but it didn't live up anywhere near to the potential of the first one. It had really good jokes, but sometimes the jokes went on for way too long. I actually did not care for Baby Groot. He was funny, but then it just kept going on and on, over and over. Like, there's this really cool joke with Baby Groot, Yondu, and Rocket in one scene, and it was funny at first, but then it overstayed its welcome as if it was a modern day Simpsons joke. Also, once again, the villain sucked. The plot twist with the villain was pretty obvious, and it was just another Marvel villain. I mean, at least they tried to develop him somewhat this time around compared to the other villains, so I guess I gotta give the movie credit there. Another few issues I have with it is it just reused some jokes from the first movie and try to do something different with them by making them a bit longer, which does feel awkward at times. Sometimes they just felt forced in. Well, the music just isn't as good as it was in the first one. I guess they blew their load with the movie's first tracks, not expecting there to be a sequel. The acting can be hit or miss. Star-Lord and the Guardians themselves are great. They're really well done, although sometimes Drax can kind of sound a little bit hokey. I think they amped up his comedy a little too much, and sometimes he got very obnoxious. The only characters I felt were kind of bad was Karen Gillian for Nebula. I don't know what happened, but her acting was horrible. She had George Lucas quality writing here. Like, some of her lines were just very cringeworthy and sounded unnatural. And then, I love Kurt Russell, but he was just playing his character from Hateful Eight again. There was no difference. If you watched Hateful Eight and then you watched this back to back, you'd think he was the same person. Which he could have been if you put Hateful Eight in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's also a little bit with these gold people that's kind of an arcade style, and it's funny, but it also takes away from their threatening nature. Now don't get me wrong, the movie is funny, and it's entertaining to watch. It's just nowhere near as good as its predecessor or some of the other Marvel sequels like Winter Soldier and Civil War. It's not anywhere near as bad as Iron Man 2 and Thor Dark World, but I'd say it's a, just slightly above Iron Man 3. There are some truly great moments in here. Yandu is really well done. I love the entire story arc, the entire development they gave for Yandu. And there's a few scenes where he steals the moment. There's something that occurs halfway through the movie, and he pulls off this scene that is just amazing, is well shot, well lit, has some truly impressive effects to it. And the effects are, for the most part, really solid. There are only a couple moments where I kind of cringed at some of the CGI, but nothing bad. If you like the first one, you're probably going to like this one. Just don't go in there with high expectations expecting it to outdo the first one. Because that is sometimes where these Marvel movies fail, is that you go in with these expectations that they're going to be better than the last one because it's Marvel. That is not the case. A lot of their sequels are good movies, but not great movies. And this is no different, which on some aspects is kind of a shame, but you know what? It depends what you're going into. If you're going in just wanting to have a good time, you're going to get that. If you are going in wanting the greatest movie of the year, you might as well go elsewhere. Because with that, I would say either check out Get Out or Split if you want the greatest movie of the year. So far. The year's still got a long way to go. And I'm expecting War of the Planet of the Apes to probably take that. Now, there are some scenes throughout the credits. In fact, this movie had five post-credit sequences that are just done throughout the credits. There's one right as the credits start, there's a couple in the middle of the credits, and then one at the end of the credits, and they are all great. They all give some hints of stuff to come. Some of them are just there to be 
fun. The obvious Stan Lee cameo is great. All around I was entertained, but again, there were jokes that fell flat, and there were moments where I felt bored. You probably could have shaved off a good 15-20 minutes of this movie and not really lost anything for its plot. The worst part is that most of the cast outside of Yondu and Star-Lord don't have much to do. Oh, and I guess I forgot about Mantis. She was cool. She was funny. Some of the stuff that happened was hilarious. Another positive of this movie is that you don't need to have seen the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe to enjoy this one. It's expected that you have seen Guardians of the Galaxy, but if that's the only one you've seen, you're not going to be at a loss. Which might also be a complaint to those wanting a movie that's going to expand the universe bigger, but I don't have a problem with that because there are some scenes that do expand the universe, but they do it in a subtle way that it doesn't feel like you need to have a vast knowledge of the Marvel library to do so. Then again, those end credit scenes, if you don't know who those characters are referencing, you're probably going to be at a loss. But those are the end credit scenes. Those are meant to build up on what's to come in the future, not what came in the past. So overall, I give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 a 7 out of 10. It wasn't as good as the first one. It's nowhere near one of the best Marvel sequels, but it's still an entertaining and fun experience. Go in for that, and you'll be golden. If you've, seen Gar if you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Did you enjoy it as much as the first one? Did you manage to like it more? Or did you think it was awful? I know there are some people that have absolutely hated it, and I'm, I can understand some of their reasoning, but not other parts. Tell me what you thought of Baby Groot. Did you think they overdid it with him, or did you think that it was just fine? Whatever your thoughts, until next time, bye. Oh, and lastly, I do have to talk about something with trailers. I don't know what was going on, but we got a few trailers in here. That, well, we got a lot of trailers, but the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer was horrible. Not the footage they showed, but the amount of footage they showed. They practically showed me the entire movie where I was expecting the end credit sequence to show up at the end of the trailer because they pretty much showed me everything. Why? Why do you need to show me everything in the trailer? I am already sold. It is Spider-Man. I was going to go see it anyway. Now all you've done is possibly turned off the people that were unsure about the movie who have now seen the entire movie. Thanks a lot, Marvel and Sony. On the other hand, the Thor Ragnarok trailer was pretty good. I am actually looking forward to that movie. I was feeling that this was going to be the worst of the Marvel movies, worse than Dark World, but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It was a fun trailer. I'm looking forward to this movie now. We also had seven other trailers, but I'll spare the talk on that.